Hey guys and welcome back to another mentioned Door tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a door in which you need to knock off these wooden boards before being able to open it. So it's essentially going to lock the door, you have to knock the boards off and then we'll be able to open the door and pass through it. So let me hit play and get in and show you what this thing will look like. So we haven't really got an animation for this, however if we just go over and press E, we're going to knock off these boards like so, individually one by one like that by pressing E each time and afterwards we can open and close the door like so and we can also walk through it after opening it like this as well. So I'll show you that again, we can get in, we go over, we press E to open the door, however you can see it's boarded up, so we press E, that's instead going to remove these boards like so, and because we are simulating the physics, you see it's going to be different each time. So that time they look like that, this time they're going to look slightly different, okay, well that time they were the same, but again, there's a slight chance that it's going to be different because it's physics, it's going to be random, and again we can then open and close this door each time afterwards because we've unlocked the door by removing the boards off of it like so. So this is what we make today, so let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is create our door blueprint, but you're also going to want to make sure that you have imported your sound effect as well. So I'm going to be using this one which I've got off freesound.org which I'll leave a link to in the description down below. So I'm using that and again you can get multiple ones as well to put in a sound cue, however I'm just using this one. So after that we're going to right click, go to blueprint class and create an actor. So we're making a new blueprint actor and I'm going to name this one Boarded Door BP. Now you can just name this Door BP or anything like that, but Boarded Door BP sounds good for me. In here, we're just going to set up the visual part first. So I'm going to add a component, I'm going to add a static mesh. This I'm just going to name to be Door and I'm obviously going to change the static mesh to be a door there. So SM Door, I'm using the start content static mesh door that we have here. One other thing we're going to do is deselect that add a component and add a box collision and this is essentially the area that a player has to be in in order to be able to interact with the door and the boards. So make this the size that you want, so again the player has to be inside of this in order to do anything with the door. So I'm going to make it about this big, I think that's good for me. You can customise this to get it perfect for you as well, make it a bit bigger like that. Deselect that once again and now I'm going to add another static mesh. Back to static mesh here and I'm just going to make this one a cube, so I could have just added a cube I'm going to add a 1 meter cube there, change the material to be some wood, so we have M wood oak there in the starter content again, and this is obviously going to be my wooden boards. So I'm going to toggle off snapping on both the movement and scaling, and just scale this to be the size that I want it to be, and then also move it into the position which I want as well. So I think that size looks good, and I'll move this up to let's say there, and I'm going to rename this as well to be board 1. Control C on that and then deselect it, hit Control V to duplicate it, and we can move it down, you see we have another board here, like so. I'm going to rotate it and just make it a bit thinner, and then move it up a bit as well. Copy that, and then duplicate it as well, so I have three. And you can put in as many boards as you want, I just want to have three, but again you can put in as many as you'd like. In fact, I might get a fourth one, just putting that over the top of all of these, like so. So to do that I'll also move it out a bit, so it looks a bit better. So that's what I'm going to be making now, and because I want to move remove board 4 first, I'm going to actually rename it. So what I'll do is name it board 0. So that way I'm going to remove that one first, and I know in my head to go in order 0, 1, 2, 3. And I want to remove it first because obviously that makes sense, is it the furthest out. But again, do this however you want, customise it to get to look however you'd like as well. But this is what I want, and I think this looks quite good. So now what we're just going to do is create some variables. So I'm going to hit the plus variable down here, and I'm going to name this one Open Angle, and I'm going to change it from a Boolean to a Float. Compile that so we can change the default value. Now the Open Angle is how far we want the door to be able to open. So if we select it, we're going to change it on the Z. So if we press E, we can rotate it. Now I want to open it all the way to here. So at one of these, so I'm going to say 110. So the Open Angle for me is going to be minus 110, which I put in there, so minus 110. And again, all you do is you simply open it to the angle you want and then you read that value there, which for me, I want to be minus 110. And we're gonna hit the plus variable again, keeping it as a float. This one I'm gonna name closed angle, and this is gonna be zero, because at the moment this is closed and this angle on the Z, this rotation on the Z, sorry, is zero. So I'm gonna leave it at zero like that. Then we'll create another variable, naming this one boards or number of boards or amount of boards anything like that and you can leave this as a float however I'm going to change it to an integer I'll compile that so we can change it 
and this is simply the amount of boards that we have. So I have four boards, so I'm going to change the default value to be four. You're going to want to change this to be how many you have. I've also noticed that I do also want to move these boards forward a bit so they're not merging in with the door. Move them forwards so they're not in the door like that. So I think that looks good, it's a little bit better, looks nicer and will also work better as well. So this is the base part of it all set up. Now we just need to do the code for actually opening the door and also removing the boards. So we'll go to the event graph, delete these three events and let's set up opening the door first. So we compile that. So to do this, what we're going to do is right click on the box collision and we're going to add event, add on component begin overlap, right click on it again, add event, add on component end overlap. Because like I say, we only want to open the door if we're in this box collision. Out of other actor, we're going to do cast to our character, which for me is the third person character. But for you, it's going to be third, first, what if you've named it. And the reason we're casting to it is so that we can only fire off this box trigger if it is this character which has overlapped it. So I'm going to do that for both of these. So the other actor of end overlap will also be the cast of third person character. Then I'm going to right click and get player controller, like so. And out of the cast off of begin overlap, I'm going to enable the input. So just out of the execution there, so enable input, the target as self and player controller as get player controller. And then out of the execution of the cast on the end overlap, we're going to disable the input with again target as self player controller as get player controller. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can then also only use the interact key when we are close enough to the door. So that we're not always firing off whenever we press E or whatever button you choose, because that way, again, it just makes the code that bit more efficient. So then to use the E key, what I'm going to do is create an action mapping. So I'm going to go to edit, project settings. And once it loads, I'm going to go down to input down here and create an action mapping. So you can see I already have one, so I'll just delete that. And we're going to hit the plus action mapping here. I'm going to name mine interact. You can name it interact, open door, anything like that. I'm going to change it to be the E key. So I'm pressing E to interact. You can have E, F, left mouse button, anything like that. And the benefit of action mappings is we can set up multiple keys. So we can have E or F or both of them, different keys for different consoles. And we can also set up key bindings. So once you've done that, you can close it. We can right click and search for what we just named it. So I named mine interact and you can see we have action events interact there and so you can just get that in and now we can have that there with it still selected we're going to untick consume input so we can have multiple instances of this door in the level and then we're also just going to hold down g and left click to get a gate the enter is the pressed of the interact open is enable input and close is disable input i'm going to move this out a little bit because we want to do some more code here later on and again what this does is it means we can only open the and close the door or remove the boards if we are close enough to the door. So this is that part there. So what I'll do is I'll select that and hit C to comment it, naming it open door if close enough, which I think sounds good. And then after the gate, this is where we want to actually open and close the door. So this is very simple. I'm going to come out the exit and I'm going to get a flip flop, which just toggles between two values of A and B, A and B being opening and closing the door. Out of A, what I'm going to do is add a timeline which is basically going to animate our door. So add timeline. I'm going to name this one open slash close door, and we can leave that in play. And then I'm going to double click that to open it up. And I'm going to add a float track in here, naming this door track. I'm also going to change the length at the top to be two seconds. And the length is essentially how long it, you want to take for the door to open. So again, I want it to take two seconds. And on the track here, I'm going to right click, add key to curve float with a time of zero, a value of zero as well. So it's the very start of the timeline. I'm going to right click, add another key to curve float, the time of two. So at the end of your timeline, so whatever length you set, put that as this time and a value of one. So again, it's going from the very beginning to the very end of our timeline. We can compile, close the timeline as that is all we need to do in there. That's that part set up. And then B of the flip flop, we're going to reverse. As obviously open the door, we want to play the animation, closing the door, we just want to reverse the animation. So it's very simple. Then out of here, what we want to do is drag a reference to our door. So our door static mesh there from the top left, drag and drop. And out of this, we're going to set relative rotation as we want to rotate the door. Plug that to update. So it does it every time the timeline updates, which is obviously when we're moving between the values. And out of the door track, we're going to get a lerp and we just want a normal lerp under float there, making sure that the door track goes into the alpha, not the A. And if we right click new rotation on the set relative rotation and split the structure pin, 
we can connect the return value into the Z there as we only want to rotate the door on the Z axis because again that will then open it like this which is obviously how we want it. Go back to the event graph and the A value is going to be where we're going from. So we want to go from our closed angle. So close will go in A and open will go in B. So we're going from closed to open and we reverse it we're going from open to closed. So that will work perfectly for opening and closing the door. So we can actually test that as well. So we compile and save. We can test to see if we've actually set up the door working to start with. So I'm going to rotate that like this. And like I say, we should now just have a normal door set up. So the boards won't play a part in this at all. They will just stay where they are. So let's hit play and test this to see if we can open and close it. So we walk in, press E, the door will open. We press E again, the door will close. So as you can see, the door open and closes, but like I say, the boards don't play a part in it at all just yet. So what we're going to do is now if I move this into a better position, we're going to go back into our door BP. So we'll go back in here like so, and let's set up using the boards. So I'll also comment this. So select it and press C, and I'll name this open slash close door animation like so. And then we'll just find some empty space underneath all this down here, right click and add a custom event. And I'm going to name this one remove boards like so. And as it sounds, this is how we're going to be removing the boards from the door. So what I want to do is I want to hold down B left click to get a branch, plugging that into the custom event there. The condition of this is going to essentially be if the board is still on the door. So to do that, I'm going to drag a reference to board zero. As again, I want to do that one first. And out of this, I'm going to get is simulating physics. Because if it is simulating the physics, then it's not going to be on the door. If it's not simulating physics, it will be on the door. So out of the return value, I'm going to get a not boolean. So we're seeing if the board is not simulating physics. And plug that into the condition of the branch there. So again, true of this branch will be if we're not simulating physics. And if we're not, then we want to start simulating physics. So what we can do is drag out of board zero. So I'll move that down there. Drag out of the board. And we're going to set simulate physics off of true. I'm going to set it to be true as well. So tick it like that. So if we're not simulating physics, then we're going to start simulating physics. I'll just double click that to get a reroute node, just to keep it nice and organized. And then what we can do is we can just select all of this, hit Control C, Control V to copy and duplicate it. I'm going to do this for the amount of boards we have. So I have four boards, so I want four checks. So I've got one, two, three, and four. And I'll just move all of these into position, change and connect them up in a second. So we've got them all there like that. So now what we want to do is false of this top branch, we'll go into the branch underneath it, false of that, underneath it, and so on and so forth. And the bottom one, we don't need to go into anything. Because essentially, we're seeing if the first board is on, if it is on, we're going to take it off. When we press it again, that board will obviously be off, so we'll check the next board, and so on until we go through all of the boards and they are removed. So again, all we need to do is then change these. So this is board zero, I want to change this one to board one. So you can just drag and drop board one onto there. This one I want to be board two and this one board three. And that is all we need to do. So now we're going to see if we're simulating physics. If we're not, we're going to start simulating physics. And if we are, we're going to check the next one. So this is going to remove the boards, but now we also need to let the code know that we have removed the boards. So to do that, we're going to use this boards integer that we made earlier. So I'm going to drag and drop this and get boards. Out of that, I'm going to get an increment integer or an increment int. And then out of that, I'm going to set boards again like so. And what the increment does is it just adds one. So because we're adding one, I don't actually want the increment, so that's my bad. We want the decrement or the decrement integer. So that's my bad. We want the decrement int like so. So we are taking one away from the amount of boards we have, which is obviously how many we have still on there. So when this is zero, we can open the door again. And we can just connect this to all of these set simulate physics here because when we simulate the physics we're removing the board so we can update that to remove one board from the code as well like so and so now that will work perfectly select all this and hit c to comment it i'm just going to simply name this remove boards from door and now to actually call this event all we want to do is up here back in our open door if close enough comment we're going to hold down b left click to get a branch plugging that into the pressed of the interact true is going to go into the end of the gate and false is going to call the function remove boards with the custom event which we just made and the condition of this branch is going to be if we have enough boards so we're going to get boards 
and out of this we're going to equal equal integer the integer at zero with then a condition there so if we have no boards left on the door we're going to open and close the door but if we have boards on the door hence this is false we're going to remove them so like i say this should now work perfectly for us however one thing as well and down here i want to add a sound effect so that's the final thing it's after set boards what i'm going to do is just simply play sound at location with the sound as my wooden hit there which is obviously removing the wooden boards and the location as get actor location like so and now this should work for us however again there might be the issue with the collision so i'll see what this is like and i'll check afterwards so let's hit play to test this and we can see if this has worked or not so we go over we press e that removed that press it again it's going to remove all of these and then we can open it however again you can see they have just fallen in front of the door so we will get that collision issue which is like that obviously not great so that's another bug fix that we can very easily do so all we're going to do and under remove boards from door what i'm going to do is drag out of the board zero here so out of this ruin node or out of your board we're going to drag out of it so we're going to drag out of the board and set collision response to channel and what we're going to do is connect this after the set simulate physics so i'm also going to get a delay so i hold on d left click to get a delay and i'm going to have the duration as something small like 0.7 so that will give it enough time to fall to the floor. The channel is going to be pawn and the new response will be ignore. So what this is going to do is essentially after we've knocked the board off the door, we're going to make it so the character can walk through it, which will work perfectly. And the reason we're not doing this anyway, so we can just change it in here to be ignore pawn, but I don't want to do that because that means that when the board is still on the door, we can just walk through it, which I don't really want. So I'm doing it here instead. So then that will connect back into the decrement integer there. I'll just move it out a little bit like so and now this will work perfectly if we do this for all of them so then we just control c control v to copy and paste this the amount of times we need connecting them all in here accordingly like so so again this is just making it so we can pass through them so we don't get that glitch with the collision that you saw at the start of the video and just a couple of minutes ago so we connect all of these and then i'll also connect the correct targets so they're all in there like so and then again, the target is just going to go into our board that we have over here, or for me, the reroute node. So now if we hit compile and save, we can hit play to test this. So if we walk over to it, press E, we're still getting that work perfectly like so. However, you can tell that the play sound is happening after the delay, which is obvious. So we've got the delay going to the play sound there. So one we could fix that is just removing the delay. So we don't actually need the delay at all. We could put the sound effect before this, but that would make the code a little less efficient. So what I'm gonna do is just simply remove the delay as we don't actually need it at all. It was just a little thing that I added. But if we just remove it, this should still work perfectly. And in fact, even better. So this is why it's always good to test your code. So now if we hit play and then go over and that works and looks a lot better. So we can remove all of these boards from the door like so still open the door and then we can just walk through them like that they don't get in our way and it doesn't break the code at all and this works perfectly so i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do we set up this cool door system in which we can have wooden boards locking the door so we can't open it but if we press e to try and open it or any other button you like the boards are going to be knocked off the door like so and because we're just using physics it will be completely random each time and we can open and close the door after we've knocked them off like so and walk through them perfectly like this so thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.